What's up everyone, Kalant Western Table Soccer here for the first Q&A video on the channel. Now we are going to start this video off by first of all thanking every single one of you that's clicked the subscribe button um, on the channel and who's supporting us on Twitter, Facebook and through YouTube as well. Honestly, every subscription, like, retweet, comment, um, I read them all, I check them all, and if I can I reply to every single one. Um, so really, really appreciate it, helping the channel to grow and get bigger and spread um, my videos and my work and stuff around. It's really, really important um, for me. It means a lot to me. So for every single one of you that does that, thank you very much. Um, the only other thing I would say is if you haven't already, get the bell on down below um, on the channel so that whenever I do release a new video, you are notified of it straight away. Our first set of questions then come in all from the same person and that is at KitCiputio on Twitter. Twitter handle coming up along there now. First question relates to um, what kind of paint do I use when I do my work. Now, a couple of paint types I use. 95% of the time I'm going to be using the Humbrol Matte Enamels. Um, come in a really, really good selection of colours actually. They've definitely broadened their colour spectrum um, over the last couple of years. Some really nice pastel colours in there as well. Um, some nice bright ones and uh, metallic gold actually which I use quite a lot. Really, really effective um, for certain teams and certain parts of kits. Um, so most time I use these and um, the reason I started using those is because it's what my dad had when I was growing up um, and I used to steal his paints and paint on my stuff um, and also it's pretty much what Subutio would have been using back when they were painting heavyweights um, which is my favourite style, my favourite era of Subutio actually, the heavyweight so back when they were painting those they'd have been using these paints so that's the reason I use those um, and they give a nice matte finish and I love a matte finish on a on a team um, if I'm not using those, then I'm using uh, Citadel water-based acrylics. Um, two reasons I use these. One, like this one, they've got some absolutely brilliant colours. Um, and football kits, especially more of the modern style football kits, come in all those different colour variations and different types of colours that Humble just don't provide for. Um, you can colour mix them, so you can mix colours together with the Humbrols and get to a colour that you want, but for doing work where you want to hit that colour more than once on a separate day or week or month. Um, that's what these guys are great for. They're also really, really good for covering up whole paint. Um, if you don't want to fully strip your teams, um, you just want to do some cover up work or some changes to a team, Citadels are great. They offer great, great coverage. Second question relating to paint is, do I thin my paint? Simple answer to that question is yes, but only if I have to. So if I get a new tin, or even an old tin, and I've shaken it up, I've stirred it with um, one of these, so I use uh, snapped off skewers to mix my paint round, so I stir them as well. Um, if I've done that and it still feels too thick, then I will thin the paint. For humble paints, I will use uh, white spirit, which I can't show you actually, because it's holding my phone up. Um, and if on the Citadel colors, um, because they're water-based, just a little bit of water in there, not very much at all, um, the best way to do it on both types is to uh, use one of these, just a basic little pipette there. Great for just adding a few drops in. So yeah, I do thin my paint, but only if I have to. I use straight from the tins, straight from the pots. Um, I will only ever take paint out of the tin and transfer it into a palette if I'm mixing a certain color. Um, so for example, most recently, I've been doing a Newcastle United frame. Um, a lot of those have black socks, but they also wore black boots. Um, and I like to be able to just differentiate slightly. So I make the boot black a little bit lighter so it's more of a really, really dark gray. So that when you look at it, you can see the difference, but it doesn't look gray, if that makes sense. Um, so that's how we are there. Next couple of questions coming in are about undercoats, primers, varnishes, and sealants. Um, do I use any of those? The answer to that is no. Um, I've never used primers or undercoats. Um, I've never felt I needed to. Um, so I haven't done. Um, all my figures uh, come in white when they first get here. So they're just plain white straight off the um, off the production line. Um, you can get flesh coloured ones, but I found with those is some colours don't adhere very well or don't look right or they change. Well, when you paint on white, you get the colour that you put on. If you paint on the flesh colour with, let's say, the one I really been used to notice it with was yellow. If you put yellow onto a flesh color plastic player, it just doesn't look right. Um, so I use, only I've used white figures. All the skin tones are always painted. Um, 
so yeah, so all my players are always white. So using undercoats and primers to me is like a waste of time. Um, there are guys out there that use them and they'll probably have reasons as to why they use them. But on a personal level, I don't use them. Um, in terms of sealants and varnishes, I have on like one or two players. I wouldn't ever do it again. I don't like the way it looks. Um, even the matte finish varnishes aren't matte finishes. I don't like a shiny finish. Um, and I'm not that bothered if teams I've painted um, get play worn. Part of the charm of Sputio Heavyweight for me is when you get a team that's been loved and there's paint missing and there's you know, maybe even a few breaks is part of what makes it for me obviously they're worth more if they're not broken or still in the ceiling but for me not really that bothered um i would love to in 5 10 15 years time come across a team that i painted back when i first started in maybe like 2010 um that's been loved and played with and the paint's coming off and it looks a bit ropey maybe even a few broken players um, usually the full backs are number two or number three, he's just got no knees, he just glued straight onto the base. That for me would mean that that team that I painted was used and loved. So I would love that to happen. Um, but yeah, so short answer is no, I don't use any of those products. A couple more questions then still coming in from at Kit Sputio. First one is how do I modify my players? Now for some stuff, um, some of my framework, if I'm doing or even some of my teamwork, if I'm doing specific players or um, I'm trying to just make things a little bit more unique, I will modify hairstyles of um, figures. Um, for that, I use this stuff here. So this stuff, two-part epoxy uh, modeling clay. Um, mini part, absolutely brilliant. I use it for a lot, a lot of different things. Um, the mini footballs that I make, uh, hairstyles, gap filling, on uh, some speedo figures if you're going to do numbers and stuff on the back of figures um especially the modern ones they have like an indent where the number should be um get some of that just smooth it right over and you can fill that gap right in and it gives you a really really nice clean surface to paint onto and then you get a nice flat surface for your names and numbers um really really good for having hairstyles textures um stuff like that um also use it if i'm doing things like this so, custom modelled um, Sputo figures. This is a special Andy King celebrating with himself um, as he's the only player to win League One Championship and Premier League and he did it all with the same club. So there he is in the kits that he wore. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different things you can do with them in terms of modifying players. So I use the milliput and to move the arms and legs you need Scalpel, cut them off, um, cut them, bend them, glue them back together, get your super glue out. So super glue, scalpel, and uh, milliput, that's it, that's all I use to modify my players. I don't do it as a, um, as a product to sell to anyone, um, but there is somebody on Twitter, at Sputio Legends, down here, unbelievably talented at making these custom figures. Um, Really, really good work. Lovely little custom boxes as well. Puts in so much effort. He's done bands, footballers, all sorts. Unbelievable work. Get on Twitter. Go check him out. Um, I'm pretty sure he does stuff to order as well. So get on there. Get in kind of anything you want of that sort of custom figure like this. Um, get on to him. He will be able to help you out with that stuff. Final question then from at Kitsbuto revolves around decals. Have I used them? How do you use them? Yes, I've used them. Didn't get on with them, don't really like them. Uh, the main reason I used them was for a uh, decal sponsor of the King Power logo for a team I was doing in 2000, and I'm gonna say 12, maybe even the championship winning side actually. Um, I wanted the King Power logo on. So I ordered the uh, front of the shirt, basically and just cut the logo out, stuck it on and painted around it. Um, it looks okay. Um, Fully decal stuff looks really, really good. Um, in terms of how you use it, I'll use water slip, so soak them water, take them, uh, pick them off, get the backer off, and then you transfer it onto the player. Um, I don't have a great knowledge of how to use them because I don't use them that much. Um, I would go to the website below if you want to buy decals or find out how to use them. They are great when they're done well. I can't do them very well, so I can't, unfortunately, give you any more advice on that as I'm totally, solely a hand painter.
so we just did there, showed you some still images of some more of the uh, custom figures that we've done in the past for ourselves. Like I say, we only do them for my, only do them for me. Um, make little models. Um, I don't know, a lot of Leicester ones, being a Leicester fan, um, and also just players who, heroes really, heroes, legends, stuff like that, or just cool little uh, things to do. So from those stills, you can see that. So we go on to our next question then. Um, this one comes in. Um, from a couple that asked similar questions at Speed Online and at Eddie Brimson, um, have asked about the brushes that I use. Um, also, a couple of guys you know, get asked this question quite a lot actually. Um, SG Maverick and Neil Gales mentioned it on Facebook earlier on today. What brushes do I use? Now, I have quite a lot of brushes, and honestly and truthfully, I'm only using a single brush uh, at the moment to do everything um, but I have like a whole selection um, got a humble green one uh, this is a zero zero don't use it at the moment I have done all my brushes usually start at zero zeros and um, don't use it got a Cotman version here uh, which is a bigger brush this is a three I haven't really used it for anything but at the moment this is the brush that I use uh, literally for everything so uh, badges, sponsors, detailing, stripes, blocking of colour, literally everything. Um, it's a bit messed up this brush, um, I've used it for about two, three, four, maybe even five years and I haven't changed it. I used to change my brushes all the time, um, but I don't anymore. Um, so yeah, I just use this one, um, it's quite trusty, it's been a good, good little servant for me and uh, I just don't really want to lose it, I'm just a one brush guy at the moment so um, yeah, so this is the one I use. It was a double zero, I think. You can't read it on there anymore, so I can't be 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it's a double zero. Um, it isn't that size anymore because I've cut bristles off of it when they've flared out or started misbehaving. So it's quite small, but I've kind of just trained it to do what I want. But it is a little bit, a uh, little bit ropey. But as I said, it's done me well so far and it's still usable. So this is the one I use. It's a Scepter Gold 2. Sounds posh, um, but yeah, any brushes really, 100% um, stable hair ones are really, really good, but in terms of what brushes you use, I would say it's more about the size than the brand of brush that you use. Um, my go-to would always be a double zero. Treble zero I find are too small, and zeros are, I find too big, but can be good. If you're just doing blocks of color, then a zero would be fine. Um, and there'll be guys out there that will use the treble zeros and even smaller than that, and they'll find they work really, really well. I personally just don't get on with them. So for me, one brush, um, it's usually a zero, zero. So that's what I'm using. Next question's coming in. Uh, this is another one just from at Eddie Brimson. Um, from my last two videos on YouTube, you'd have seen me doing some restorations on a couple of teams. Um, I left the numbers on the bases um, painted on, which is what I did when I played with them and when I originally painted them um, in my teens. Um, can you remove it? Yes, the simple answer to that is yes. Um, I didn't want to for these two teams because I still plan to use them. Um, so there was no point me taking um, the numbers off, um, but you can do it. Um, the best thing to use on it is methylated spirit to get it off on a cotton bud. Um, you want to try and avoid getting it on other parts of the paint because it will take other paint off But it works really really well at getting numbers of bases and cleans them up really really good um, can, White spirit can be used but it doesn't work as well. Meths is definitely the best one to use So that's how you can get rid of the numbers for the bases If I was restoring a team for someone then I would definitely have taken it off um, But for the two teams that I did which we'll show you the stills of next um, The finished product of them. Um, I decided I wanted to keep it on there because that's how I did it, that's what I wanted, and when I do go back to playing with them, that's how I want it to be. So yeah, so from those last deals, you can see that I left the numbers on, um, and the restoration jobs I did from the other two videos that are on YouTube. So if you haven't watched the other two uh, restoration videos, please go check them out. And there's a few more other little hints and tips in there. Um, and hopefully you'll enjoy them. Next question then comes from Facebook and it's SG Maverick and sort of a Neil Gales uh, in a conversation with me on Facebook. So I thought I might as well include it now. Is best way to remove paint from figures. Now I know that Mr. Muscle Oven Cleaner works really, really well on 
heavyweight paint. Um, so old school humble paint, old school enamel paint. Works really, really well at stripping it. Um, what you don't want to do is leave it too long. I cannot quite remember uh, the time to leave it on for. I remember vaguely you used to leave it on maybe overnight, maybe a little bit longer. Toothbrush it off so it starts to flake off and clean it up. Certain colours don't come off as well. Some reds will stain the plastic, um, but they go quite faded so you can uh, cover them up. And if you use a Citadel white, then you can get them back to perfect white. Um, in terms of machine painted uh, Sputio stuff, I'm not sure. I've never done it. I've never tried to strip paint off of a machine painted lightweight Sputio player, but I'm sure it can be done and I'm sure there'll be guys that will know how to do it. Um, I will maybe do a little bit of digging, see if I can find any information out from any of the guys that do do uh, lightweight restorations and lightweight painting, what they use and how they do it. Um, but yeah, so you can do it. Mr. Muscle, uh, Mr. Muscle Oven Cleaner is what I've used before. Um, I haven't gotten it at the moment, which is hence why, one of the main reasons why I wasn't uh, stripping those other figures down. I've got some other figures that need restoring that probably could do with it. Um, so I might wait till I can get hold of some. But yeah, that's how I go through there. And other little points that I mentioned in that conversation was about magnifying glasses, etc., etc. Personally, I don't use them. Uh, there's guys that do use them. I've tried. I actually think it makes me a worse painter. Um, I mess up. I struggle with the differences. I can't get my head around it. So I don't use them. Um, I do everything freehand, naked eye. Um, no magnification, I just use a daylight lamp or two. I've got two set up here at the moment, neither of which are on um, at the moment. But when I'm painting, um, I use two daylight lamps, no magnification. Um, it can work for people. There will be guys that really use it. I've seen people order, um, it's mentioned they've ordered magnifiers that are just starting out. Um, and yeah, go for it. Give it a try. It might help you. It might not. A lot of paint in Sputio, and you'll probably see it with a lot of us, um, that do paint, we all paint slightly different. We've all picked up different techniques, different tips, different habits that work for us. Now, some of this stuff may work for you, some of it may not work for you, but it's about finding and taking out and experimenting really. Like my stuff, when I first started painting, didn't look like it does now. Um, the easy way to look at that would be to go back at those restoration videos. And I painted both those teams uh, originally when I first started painting. And I've done them again, and you'll be able to see the massive difference um, that they are now to where I started okay you learn you pick things up um, you just get better practice does make permanent if you practice in the right way trial and error try things out um, and yeah go through it that way so that's what I'd say about that next question comes in from at the almighty Quinn uh, and this one relates to the painting of hoops the best way to paint hoops now I will do a separate video tutorial on painting certain kit types. Um, hoops will be one of them. Um, I used to make mistakes with hoops, um, which I'll show you guys how I used to do it now of an old picture of an old team I did, which was the Wanderers. So you can see from that last still that the way that I paint the hoops back when I first started painting was to continue them across in a horizontal straight line even over onto the sleeve so everything was in a straight line um, it doesn't aesthetically look right um, and the reason for that is because the video players arms flare out a little bit so the hoops will obviously then change their angle in comparison to the rest so what you want to have um, is a straight line across the shirt and then angle it up on the hoops so you have straight 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 angles up on the hoops um, which we'll show you in a still now with a Celtic player stills that I just showed you there you should be able to see what I'm talking about um, in relation to the shirts with the straight lines across and the angled sleeves looking aesthetically much better and much more realistic than the straight lines all the way across um, my other top tip for painting hoops for anyone that's going to paint hoops is try um, to keep the color balance between the colors that you're putting on the shirt um, as even as possible uh, for example that Celtic player I painted there has actually only got three green hoops on it um, the kit that I copied it from probably had about five or six so if I'd have tried to put six green hoops on a Sputio shirt the space that you have just isn't there and what you'll end up with is rather than the broad hoop design which is um, what I was copying 
you end up with a more of a pinstripey uh, design, which isn't what you're aiming for in the first place. So what you're looking for is that color balance between what you're hooping together. Um, so I would say just try and get an amount of hoops on there that looks aesthetically right and not necessarily trying to copy exactly how many there are. Same goes for stripes. Um, you're just looking for a color balance across the across the shirt, across the kit, um, which matches as best the shirt you're trying to copy. Um, so that would be there. The other little tip I've got, same with blocking out um, on the Huddersfield video where I blocked out the side sections with, um, I did frames around what I was gonna paint first and then fill in the rest. I'll do exactly the same thing with hoops. So I will frame the top and the bottom of the hoop and then I'll fill it in and I will continue my hoop from the shirt to the sleeves at the same time, trying to match up where it would go on the flare out on the outside um, so that you end up with an even distribution. You're not trying to catch yourself up on the sleeve. So you try and match it up as it goes across. Um, other question that came in from at the almighty Quinn was, do I have any plans to resurrect any old kits? For example, Bradford Park Avenue's black, red and amber hoops. Now, I'm gonna show you a quick still. You can see, I've actually already done that kit a very, very long time ago. I know I could do a better job of that now. Um, I'm always happy to do old kits. Um, I think the old kits are actually, in a lot of the times, better than the newer ones. The newer ones look great, but tend to be quite traditionalist when it comes to kits and things that I think look good uh, on studio figures don't necessarily look good uh, in real life and vice versa. But yeah, so I will do pretty much any kits. I love an old kit. Um, the historical kit frames I do um, contain mostly old kits um, as it starts from there and goes forwards into now. Um, so you go through the past of a team into the most modern kit at the time of uh, me producing it. Um, but yeah, so resurrecting old kits, something I love to do and something I will continue to do in future. Um, so yeah, it will happen. Next question then, these are more related to the playing of Sputio. First one is from at Sputio Collect. So the Sputio Collector on Twitter, Twitter handle here. Um, I will put a link in the description below actually to his YouTube channel. Now he was the first guy actually, I'm gonna just talk about Stuart a little bit. First guy that I saw uh, take the plunge and do Sputio on YouTube has a great, great channel, um, great in front of the camera, really, really uh, inspirational actually um, that he's done as well as he has done. Um, out of it, he puts in a lot of time, a lot of effort, spends a lot of money doing it. Um, he is now monetized um, by YouTube. That's a massive, massive achievement for anyone starting on YouTube. To get to that level of monetization is amazing. Um, and that comes down to support from you guys and it also comes down to the amount of effort and time he says that he puts into it. So if you aren't already and you haven't already checked him out, get following on Twitter, get on that link that's gonna be in the description below, get on his channel, get following it, it's brilliant. Um, but yeah, his question actually relates to my dream place to play Sabutio. It's not really something I've ever really thought about um, massively. If I was gonna go off the top of my head, being a Leicester fan, obviously I would say uh, the King Power Stadium. Um, but in terms of stadium size, I might also go with uh, the Benito Villa Marin in uh, Seville, the better stadium. I've been around that stadium um, on my own, actually. They just let me in. Uh, <laughs> I went there when they were uh, just back in the first division. Um, I was outside the stadium having the photos taken with my grand. My grand's off her head, by the way. Um, my grand just goes in there and starts yabbering away and broken Spanish and English and then next thing I know they're leading me through this door and then they just say there you go and I basically uh, was allowed to walk around it explore the stadium uh, on my own I don't think I'd be allowed to do it now but it was absolutely incredible um, to see how high it goes it's massive um, it goes up a long long way so yeah to play there would be amazing just because of the sheer scale of where it is so either one of those two so King Power Benito Villa Marin would be my two my two selections um, next question comes in from at Jeremy Bradley 49 on Twitter and these are related to playing as well. So do I prefer the older balls or the tango balls or that sort of size balls to play with? The simple answer to that question is neither. Um, I'll show you guys in a steal in just a second. Um, the size ball that I use is actually the smaller ones um, than both of those. The tango generation, so that 90s style of football look the best. Aesthetically, they look incredible. 
um, all the different designs, the Mitre Ultimaxes, the Tangos, the Alicantes, um, the Reavers, everything, the USA 94 ball, the Italian 90 ball, they look brilliant, but I just can't get on with them. I find they're too heavy, they're too big, um, they don't move how I like them to move. Um, so I actually use a smaller ball, which I'll show you guys in a steel now in comparison next to a Tango. So yeah, from that you can see the size of ball I am talking about. Now, another little thing about balls is I always use the orange ones of those balls because they roll straight. Um, for some reason, the brown ones and the white versions of those balls don't roll particularly well. Um, tend to go all off in funny angles. There are orange ones that do that as well, but I tend to find the orange ones do work the best and uh, go in straight lines. So even if it's not high vis time of year, get the orange ball out for me because it just rolls straight. It gives me a truer roll on the pitch. Continuing the questions from um, Jeremy then, have I tried the modern version of table football with a slidey ball or the slidey pitches and the slidey players? Um, have I tried it? No. Have I polished bases of my players to try and recreate something similar? Yes. Did I like it? No. Um, for me, it has always been about recreating as close to the real game as possible. So that comes down to um, formations, um, personnel so when I was doing my solo leagues and when I play odd games now like the players are important to me who they are and how they line up on the pitch will be as close to, as I can to how they would line up in real life um, and being able to spin and curve a player um, for me is is part of the skill of the game that's the player dribbling that's the player taking someone on being able to curl a player between two other players or round a player to get to the ball or if the ball's right on the touchline, being able to drag it back, I like doing a nice little skill on the touchline. So personally, I prefer the older school style of the game, um, where it represents real football more than nine and ten guys up on a shooting area and just playing these straight, slidey, slidey stuff. It's not for me, um, but those guys have got their own version of the game. They're keeping that version of the game going, which in turn keeps Sabutio, keeps table football, just you know, keeps it going really. Um, so I would never criticise those guys for doing that, but for me personally, it's not for me. I prefer a more old school version of playing. And the last question today comes from Jeremy Bradley again: Is do I play competitively? Um, the simple answer to that is no. I don't. I don't play in any tournaments, any leagues, or anything. The only time I ever play competitively is when I play against my brother, um, because it's sibling rivalry. It gets that way. I don't think he cares personally, but I get wound up because I play more than him. I'm involved with it more than him. And he still beats me. And it really, really bothers me. It can get quite feisty. Uh, <laughs> it's a good laugh. It's a bit of a family joke. But yeah, the only time I ever play competitively uh, is against my brother. So that's it. That's the end of the first Q&A then. Um, thank you very much to everybody who took time out to send questions. I will try and tag you guys in uh, the tweets about the videos so that you can see that I've answered them. Um, please, please, please continue to support the channel. Um, support me. Come follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle has been up here all day, uh, all the way through the video. Um, get the subscribe button on. So please, please, please subscribe if you don't already. And get the bell on as well so that if ever I bring out a new video, you guys are to see it. Um, new videos we've got coming up actually, thinking about. Um, we've got the 5,000 to 1 frames. I'm so close to getting these done. My final little extra touch has turned up. I'm just waiting for uh, some stuff to turn up to complete the frames. Then I'm going to put those together. We've got a couple of brand new historical kit frames to do. One I've never done before. I'm really, really excited about. Um, I've started planning it now. Cannot wait for those bits to turn up. I'm going to do some team paints. Going to do some tutorial work. Some more restoration. So please, please, please keep supporting the channel. Please like it. Please subscribe to it. Um, and yeah, stay at home. Stay safe. Um, keep flicking. Get the Sputio out. Get playing it. Um, if you've got old bits at home, you've got some old paints kicking around, have a go at restoring stuff, have a go at painting stuff. Um, just get on it, you can't really go wrong. As long as you like what you've produced at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks, what anyone else would have done, but you can take something that you never use and make it something that you do use. So get the paints out, get working, and I will see you guys in the next one.